Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Monday morning. It is draft week. It's finally here. Kansas City will host the NFL draft this year. How many people are expected to attend? NFL estimates that about 300,000 will attend it during the course of the three days. All begins on Thursday. For <laughs> Thursday's round one, and it runs for three hours. TV, thank you, or no thank you, whatever your decision might be. Two rounds on Friday and then four through seven on Saturday. It's a seven-round draft, of course. And all protracted. And you know, Mike, it's interesting because the crowds will gather. I think, unfortunately for many of them, it may be a disappointment. They're accustomed to watching it on TV and seeing the rapid order of things done. It's not the way it is live. It'll be an altogether different thing. But nonetheless, you will be there. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun, I think, for the constituency that will be there. And it is what it is. Seven-round draft. We'll see who goes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, do you think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to try and trade up in the draft this I year? I would. Yeah. If I were Veach, I would. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. If it's there, he will. If not, we're going to wait to the end. <laughs> a little racing yesterday afternoon. Who won? Yeah, this is on the Super Speedway at Talladega, and uh, Kyle Busch won. This is 62nd. I knew the guy had been around a long time, but this is pretty good. 62nd career victory. It happened in the second overtime, and it ended under the yellow flag. Big wreck on the final lap, cars spinning out, colliding with everybody else, and Bush held on to uh, get the get the checkered flag at Talladega. So that, that is a big win for him and a big win for racing, and competition goes on now throughout the rest of the year. It's already been a pretty exciting season. If you're in a NASCAR, you're having a great time. It has been a lot of fun to watch. Uh, last but not least, uh, we've got the Stanley Cup playoffs going into the playoffs. The Boston Bruins were the "Quote unquote best team in hockey." They still the best team in hockey. They're think? three and one in their series, and they're going to wrap that up. So are the Carolina Hurricane. They may, may be a bit of a surprise in the NHL. The uh, Dallas Stars and the Minnesota Wild are tied at two games apiece. As are the Edmonton Oilers and the Los Angeles Kings, both tied at two two. It's a uh, best of seven, best four out of seven. I think Boston and Carolina come away with wins. And for the rest of it, all continues tonight. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, you ever ice skate? Never. You, see, I was always, well, I always want to ask you that because you grew up on the East Coast. I figured you'd, they make you do it. It's kind of like would, Canadians. It would be more of a northern, uh, northern part of the northern sector around New England, and then up in the northern Midwest uh, sector uh, and Canada, of course. But no, never did learn how my brothers did. But I'm kind of a clutch. You, <laughs> you went for the sleds instead. <laughs> Cardinals and Royals active yesterday. Who got the win? Well, the split. Cardinals did get a win, one win in their three-game series in Seattle, and got a terrific pitching performance from Jack Flaherty, and that has to be extremely encouraging to this ball club. He was very, very efficient in what he did, pitched very well, and the Cardinals matched it with some pretty good offense. Gave up the lead in the second inning when Flaherty got touched up for three runs, but they were the only three runs that Seattle scored the whole game. Cardinals win it by a score of 7-3, to three, go down to San Francisco to face the Giants tonight. Now, the Royals out-hit the Los Angeles Angels 8-7, to seven, but... Didn't outscore them. That's where it counts. Four to three. The Angels won. Shohei Otani with a, one half of the Angels' RBIs. He had two of them. That guy is really a good player. And the Angels de- uh, beat the Royals, who are now five and seventeen on the year. Springfield Cardinals lost their game ten to three to the Midland Rockhounds. The Cardinals started Connor Lunn, a kid from Southern Cal, who the St. Louis Cardinals had a lot of high hopes on when they drafted him, but. He hasn't come through, got touched up for seven runs on seven hits in just over three innings of work, and Springfield loses 10-3 to to Midland. Springfield is now on the road. They're going to Wichita for the next six games. How about the uh, Drury baseball team? How are they doing so far? Drury had a little bit of problem over the weekend. They hosted Lewis University from up in the Chicago area, and Lewis won three out of four, and that's... Of course, the jury's record is still 27-19 and 19 on the year, but to uh, head into conference play, which is coming up here fairly shortly, that's not a good string to be on. Anyway, Drury loses uh, three out of four to Lewis and now goes to Quincy to close out the regular season this weekend. The Bears get that three-game sweep of Belmont, and that's, that's pretty doggone good. Belmont, a new team in the Missouri Valley Conference, and the Bears sweep them. The Bears have a nice little challenge tomorrow night at Hammond Field. It's a non-conference game. 
But the nationally ranked Razorbacks come into play. Arkansas and Missouri State should be interesting. How's Arkansas doing this They're year? Very, very, yeah, very good. Yeah, it's going to be a tough, tough challenge for the Bears. Okay. All right. Uh, also, we still have the uh, NBA playoffs happening right now. Oh, it's who, got a long way to go. Oh, well, yeah, cause that's because <laughs> everyone gets in. But uh, who are the winners and losers? Well, the, the big the big winner, of course, is Philadelphia because they, they knocked off the Brooklyn Nets in four games. So they're sitting back down, healing up the bumps and bruises. New York Knicks have a three games to one lead over the Cleveland Cavaliers. Golden State and Sacramento are tied at two games apiece. The Boston Celtics have a three games to one lead over the Atlanta Hawks. And the Minnesota Timberwolves down 3 nothing to the Denver Nuggets. Won a game that they had to have to win all of them from here on in. Denver has a 3-1 lead but did lose last night to Minnesota. Like you said, it's got a long way to go. <laughs> That's not a bad thing, Ned. I'll uh, see you tomorrow.